The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. I love gold! Welcome everybody to Pillow Talk. How's everybody doing? I hope you are enjoying your lovely day. I'm your boy Franklin and I am joined by, well, I get the cat's out of the bag now. He's running for President of the United States of America, Uncle Howard. Well, it's true. I'm running for president of these are God's own United States of America in 2020. And I do hope you all vote for me. I love all babies. That's your stance. I like babies. Yeah. That's your stance for running no one, for president. No one can argue with that. <laughs> Even the smoking babies, the baby, that baby who's smoking. Oh, the smoking baby. The smoking there. baby. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Uh, nephew to the general. Nephew to the general. The smoking baby is the nephew to the general. For those listening for the first time, my name's Franklin. That's Uncle Howard. Hi. We record every episode from our king size bed, the bear we sh- the bed we share, the bed we sleep in at night, and the bed we always watch a movie in before going to bed. And we were just people of tradition, Howard. We are well. We're uh, we're creatures of habit. And creatures of habit. We're creatures. That's what. That's what. That's what you said uh, in court once, didn't you? I did. They the told. Fence. They told me that was a legal defense in Key Largo. It turns out it only works on Key Conk. <laughs> okay, uh, the Conk Republic, actually. The Conk yeah. Republic. <laughs> yeah. So we always pick a movie here at Pillow Talk. Uh, you know. It's just tradition we do. You know, me and my uncle, we love to watch films, and we love to watch them before going to bed together. You know, some people think it's unnatural. I say you are probably racist. That would be the sure thing. In a, in a lot of other cultures, men sleep in bed together. There's nothing weird about it. No, no, much less uncles and nephews, for crying out loud. Like, how much less weird can that be? There We've known nothing. each other for a long time. Jeez Louise. Anyways, Howard, I picked... I picked a banger today. I picked an exciting movie. I want that adrenaline pumping. You know what I mean? Some I hear excitement. You. you hear me? How about Hayden Christian starring role in a movie called The Phantom Menace? No, that wasn't him. That was Jake Lloyd. Oh, what happened to him? <laughs> He's behind bars in the slammer where you should probably be, actually. Oh, I'm due back there any minute now. Uh, I mean jail, not the slammer, the uh, club you go to with uh, many hunks, many studs, the slammer. Uh, You, the general, like to go there on occasion. Yeah, the general just goes because he knows how to get cheap drinks there. (laughs) Hey, more power to him. But no, this, you know, we're watching Jumper. It's starring Hayden Christensen, not Jake Lloyd. It didn't boyhood Jake Lloyd like I, like my suggested. I suggested that years ago. Step back from that ledge, my friend. Yes. Play that for Jake Lloyd. I think, I mean, we shouldn't poke fun. The man, you know, he's, he had a rough go at it, and it's unfair to him. People were, these pu- these prequel haters were unfair to him. Jack you know? Nicholson warned him. <laughs> <laughs> I warned that, him. That role will drive you mad. You don't want to be the Phantom Menace, little Jakey. <laughs> you put on the makeup. Ooh, I'm warning you. Forget it, Jake. It's when the fuck did he Darth did he say Vader. that after Keith Ledger died? He told yeah, he told him after Heath Ledger died. He said, <laughs> "I told him, I told him, don't play that character, or something like that." Don't play th- what character? The character he played in his fucking last movie, like it was what was the his? jokes man, <laughs> enemy of the show. Ugh, ugh, I don't want to talk about him. What was his last movie? Let me look Ooh. it up right quick. Keith, Keith Ledger. Ledger. Yeah, Keith Ledger. Keith that <laughs> or was, Heath. That I believe it was Batman, unless he, no. made, he made some garbage that came out he afterwards. Did a, no, 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 no. He did a movie, Dr. 
Parnarsis. That's right. <laughs> and, and, so is that what Jack Nicholas warned him about? I'm sorry, yeah. Jack Nicholson? Yeah, he said, don't make Dr. Parnassus. <laughs> that, that, that in gets that. in your head. That's <laughs> insane. Oh, I'm sorry. The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnarsis. Dr. Isn't Parnarsis. there was another Imaginarium movie? Uh, mm, With, like, I, Natalie Portman or something? Or no, no, no. Natalie no. Hirschfeld. <laughs> it, it was what? It was the the doctor movie she was in. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, man. Thor. Oh my God, you're killing me. Uh, Breaking Bad. He got two DVDs. I know you've never seen Breaking Bad. God damn it, Howard. You are I'm, useless. I'm not Mr. Magorium's Wonder Emporium. That's oh. what I confuse with Doctor Panarsis. It's the all imaginarium. My brain's mush right now, guys. My brain is mush tonight. Uh, well, anyways, that's because you think you thought those were Mike's harder lemonades. You oh, were why would you do that? You they're replaced... Mike's hardest lemonades. Oh god, I mean, that's why I'm tanked, everybody. They're Uncle 95% Howard, ninety-five percent alcohol. He did a switcheroo, like you guys know. Uncle a Howard was classic once... switcheroo. Not a classic switcheroo. You once replaced. A Lay's uh, uh, Pringles barbecue with Lay's Stacks original. And oh, you know how awesome. disgusting it was the moment I bit into it and oh, felt that original salty flavor and not BBQ? Well, you know how appalling that is? I do remember because it was getting you back for when you put an almond joy inside of my Slim Jims. <laughs> well, you should have realized that the moment you open it and not have to bite it. You know, that's on you, Howard. That's on you. Anyway, I, I didn't have time to look. I was having a low sodium level. <laughs> low sodium. Oh, that's, that's very tr typical. Anyways, Jumper with Hayden Christensen. You know, so this movie, he can jump to different locations as long as he has a photograph. You know, I feel Just very like believable. Just like Nickelback's photograph. Just like Nickelback. If he was in the Nickelback photograph music video, he could be jumping around those locations he could be bouncing around you know so, so this movie does not take place in the nickelback cinematic universe no it doesn't take place in the ncu it's its own separate story here and he jumps around he, he robs a bank is like the first thing he does you know uh i mean he doesn't even like do some pervert stuff or anything like that you know which is kind of a little you know tough to believe yeah uh, there's a scene where his dad uh, is watching Family Guy. His dad was, uh, what's his name? He played Merle on The Walking Dead. Uh, he was in Guardians of the Galaxy uh, 1 and 2. Michael Roker. Oh, Michael guy. Roker. Great man. Yeah, great man. And he was watching Family Guy there. And it's like, that's just season one shit of Family Guy or something like that. So I'm picking Jumper. It's I feel like this is ahead of its time. If it came during this... Marvel craze that everybody loves. Everybody loves Marvel. Uh, I think it would have done great. You know, he jumped around. He went to the Sphinx, which is how badass is that? Best. Sam Jackson shows up to hunt him, which is how crazy cool enough. How cool is that? That is that is cool. He leaves a guy in like some weird crevice in like the Grand Canyon or some shit where he's gonna die. He left the man to starve to death essentially in like the middle, uh, maybe not the Grand Canyon, but some kind of mountain where there's nowhere to go. And he can't go up, he can't go down except plummet. It was very mean actually. Pretty fucked up. That Pretty is... fucked up. Yeah, it's just kind of coming to me. It's like that's a really messed up part of the movie where he does that, you know? But that's <laughs> Jumper, ladies and gentlemen, and I can't wait to revisit it with you, Howard. I can't wait to watch a movie, uh, and I can't wait to watch this movie that I'm watching uh, through your eyes as though I've seen it for the first time. Because <laughs> when, I, when I see the joy in your eyes, it, it brings a spark of love to my heart. Yeah, yeah, that's why you're always looking in my eyes when I'm watching American Dad, and that's when I'm at my, my uh, most happiest. American Dad, American Pie, and American Beauty. Yeah. The three what? Americas that made America great. <laughs> That's what Trump has been talking about the whole time. Yeah. Those those three features right make there. Make American Dad great again. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Why hasn't Seth MacFarlane thought of that yet? <laughs> what a bozo. Yeah, well, <laughs> copyright. 
Uncle Howard. <laughs> That's not how copyright law works, but okay. That is going to be my campaign slogan. <laughs> copyright Uncle Howard? Copyright or make Uncle American Howard. Dad, or make American Dad great again. Oh, at first I thought from the latter, but now I'm thinking the former. <laughs> Why not, you know? Why not? Well, Anyways, for... what's your movie, Howard? Well, as you know, I'm still kind of keyed up on politics from when we had Jack on the show, and... Politics have been happening more often in the world now than they ever have been before. So I thought I would pick a movie with some uh, some political intrigue. But then what if I told you political intrigue could also be exciting? Impossible. I'd, I'd, well, I'd call you a liar for well, starters. Well, you'd call me a liar. Would you call me a true liar? Because oh. the movie I picked is 1994's blockbuster smash hit True Lies. Okay, all right. Arnold Schwarzenegger plays a regular, boring, suburban dad who's Austrian and 6'5", 250. Typical uh, Joe. Typical just a regular Joe guy. Joe six-pack, you know. Yeah, real Joe the plumber. And his job is so boring that no one could care about him. His wife thinks he's a real snore, and his daughter, who I might, might uh, remind you, is played by... What's her name? Uh, the Faith from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Faruza oh. Bulk. Who's that? No, it's not. I made that up. Uh, oh, Michelle Trachtenberg. No, no, no. Mich no. Michelle from Himium and uh, American Pie, right? Sure. You sure about this? You, no. you yanking my chain? God I, damn it, Howard. Stop I'm, fucking with me. Oh, hang on. Eliza Dushku. Ooh. That's Ooh. who... Yeah, Eliza Dushku and Ooh, Jamie We're big douche crew guys on the show. And the man who single-handedly brought down the Trump administration, Tom Arnold. <laughs> Tom Arnold. Yep, the real renegade, that guy. <laughs> real he, renegade. He, he had the dirt on Trump, and he proved it. What did he say? He said he had tapes of Trump saying the N-word, and... He must have, because we never heard from Tom Arnold again after that. So, <laughs> Trump, Trump probably had him killed or bought him off or one of the above, but it was definitely true. And was this on the uh, the best sports show period? Is that <laughs> when Donald <laughs> Trump said it? It was on the man show. <laughs> the man show. Oh, well, who am I to deny that? That, that definitely happened. I, I take. I feel like Tom Arnold, the most damn, like the worst thing he would do to Trump is like... <laughs> tweet at him get real pal <laughs> like, yeah i'd be like wake up and smell the coffee <laughs> that was you that was me but i that's something tom arnold once told me <laughs> he was throwing you out of his porch huh yeah he threw was... scalding coffee <laughs> on you. he threw it's it right in up. my face <laughs> yeah how could you not smell it jeez tom yeah it was all i could smell for three weeks bastard anyway wow. <laughs> good man i can't say i didn't deserve it <laughs> So, so, edit, what was this, Liar? <laughs> True Lies, you True said? Lies. No, no, like, okay, I'm all over the place here. True Lies, political intrigue, Arnold Schwarzenegger, this boring guy. He's a boring guy. It just seems he's going off to his job. Everyone treats him like he's a real schmuck. But when he gets to his job, then he goes through a secret passageway, and you realize he's a cool spy. And he's saving the world left and right, day and night, like it's nothing at all. But what? what happens when his home family life gets mixed up with his secret professional life? Damn. Okay. Okay, maybe politics once in a while, just once in a while, can be kind of cool. This is a little interesting here. All right. If politics weren't cool, why would Tia Carrere be involved as a villain? <laughs> True, Stacy Dash as well. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, at least in Fox News, she's a, so Tia Carrera's in this movie as well. That's right. God damn! So Tia Carrera, the only Eliza Carrera Dush I like better than a Porsche career is a Tia Carrera. <laughs> <laughs> damn! Well done, Howard. Eliza Dushku, Tia Carrera. I mean, that's that's a banger of a film. I have to say, I, I'm in. I'm invested. Uh, We'll put that on afterwards because you only had the VHS, but my movie is the Blu-ray. And, oh. Howard, I want to take a small break of the show right mo right now, okay? I'd love to. This is the great Kali. Keep going, make video pillow talk, Franklin. Uncle Howard, it is 
not for nanas. And we're back. Sorry about that brief intermission. Heard somebody knocking on the door, thought it was the feds, and thankfully it was not the feds. It so. was simply state. <laughs> exactly. We just explained to them what Uncle Howard does in his own backyard, even though we don't have a fence. I said no I recognize no authority but federal authority. <laughs> I see no states, and they said they'll be back later on. <laughs> good guys. Good guys. Anyways. Howard, we have some fan questions. <sighs> <laughs> you, you, you deleted some of them. I didn't choose all of the questions. You didn't choose all of them. There were just so many because we have so many fans. Okay, right, 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 right. So anyways, um, I guess, you know, it's fans that make us, so we should, we should be a little more. We love, we love you, fans. Wow, how genuine is that, people? How you genuine? You are wonderful. Anyways, uh, our first question comes from a longtime fan, uh, <laughs> Chicago native, probably. Chicago guy is freezing to death in the polar Freezing vortex. to death. I think he's one of the homeless people that died. May um, he rest in peace. May he rest in peace. If he died by where the Gotti poster was in Chicago, then it was an honorable death, at least. If you know. Gotti can gaze upon your corpse, <laughs> you died an honest man. Absolutely. So, this is from White Trash Teach. Me out a guy for you. Have you ever found a woman's feet attractive, even though she had a missing toe slash toes? Uh, okay, I mean, this is strictly for you, Howard. You're... You're a foot expert. Oh, I, I, I have enjoyed some feet lately. Of course. You've been learning under my, uh, under I, my tutelage. I genuinely was working with uh, another teacher, and she was in, like, flats, and I'm looking at her feet. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> what has what happened here? Like, I'm genuinely like, oh, those are pretty nice. Like, yeah, it was, well, like, a real issue. Yeah, Howard, yeah, I was like, yeah, this ain't there, good. There's nothing wrong with noticing a shapely foot. Look at it this way. All the time, you'll see people saying, ugh, look at that gross foot. Ugh, that, those toes are gross. Those are disgusting <laughs> toes. If you say that, that means you're willing to make a value judgment on a foot's attractiveness. So if you're going to say that a foot's unattractive, then you damn well better turn around and say a foot is attractive, or else you ain't worth your salt, and that's coming straight from President Howard. <laughs> Next Jeez. question! So you've always found women's feet to be attractive, even with any missing... Uh toes and whatnot without darkness there can never be light Jesus christ who are you the batman i'm the jokes man <laughs> oh be careful i'm warning you i'm warning you howard it's me jack nicholas jack i'm nicholas. warning you howard you don't want to play dr papyrusness you better look I'm out you. or i'll call your greatest rival <laughs> Arnold Palmer. Oh no! Hell of a golfer. Hell I can't enough. believe he was real. He was real. I thought he was just a drink. Why would he name a drink after somebody who was alive? He died recently, right? Uh, yeah, everyone has. Okay, so when he died, it was just like, oh wait a second, this was a real person, and we've been having his drink, so he's like, he's been able to order himself for a while. Like you, you should you, you only make drinks of dead people, man, not people who are alive. Well, the thing is, he won't ever die now that the drink lives on. <laughs> Fuck you, so dumb, man. God damn it. <laughs> Ugh, God damn it. All right, next one is from uh, your legitimate son, uh, Pipe Pitters Local sixty nine. It's a hell of a hand. Shit Ship Pearl. at Ship Pearl. He, he says, Miata guy for you. I mean, I actually didn't have to read that. What kind of shenanigans did Howard and Franklin's dad get into when they were younger? Hmm. Uh, what? I mean, okay, so we don't have the same dad. I mean, not as far as we know. Not as far as we it, know. Has it been established? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure uh, it's been established. No, we don't have the same dad. So, yeah. You are my uncle, so what would be my dad? I, what scandal? It, I mean, I remember my dad once pissed in I mean, yeah, my dad once pissed in an elevator. Your dad and my dad did get in a lot of uh, trouble together, though. That's true. Come Maybe on, that's, what he, uh, that's what he's asking about. They were, okay. Uh, 
Okay. They were the ones who did the uh, the the big um 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 uh, what was the uh, big plane help. theft? They did the big help. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what plane? Th- oh, you're talking about the DB Cooper? <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's right. We uh, one of them was D at Coo, and the other was B B Per. <laughs> and, and uh, you put D Coo and B Per. D Coo and B Per. You get D B Cooper. Of course. <laughs> they, everybody references them. Yeah. Yeah, it's, just, it, it's like it's like a Benifer. Yeah, like Benifer. D.B. Cooper. Or like Benny Hoffman Weiss. Yeah. They're like, I don't know who they were. I thought it was one person for the longest time. I kept hearing, oh, Benny Hoffman Weiss is going to direct the Star Wars. Oh, Benny Hoffman Weiss. And it turned out it was Benny Hoffman Weiss or some shit. I don't watch. I don't watch the Lord of the Rings show, people. I'm not trying to be a fucking cool guy. I'm sure it's fine or whatever, but like, I don't watch... Lord of the Rings show, period. I don't, I don't know what anything you've just said. Game of Thrones, man. It's like based off the rings and all that old-timey bullshit that oh, nobody was alive for. History Channel stuff. History Channel stuff. If it's in the books, why would I care about it and you make a movie out of it? I'll read the book if that's the case. I, Even then. If, just... if, if I want to read a book, the only book that I'm going to read is the book the judge is throwing at me. <laughs> if I'm going to read a book, it's going to be the book of Eli. Oh, dope classic, ass movie. classic. That's, a dope, that's just a dope-ass movie. Come on now. So, he's I mean, blind. He's blind the whole time. Twist. Uh, so what kind of trouble were our, da- what were our dads getting into? Yeah, so our dads may have or may not have been D.B. Cooper. We don't know that for sure. You know, it's a shame. Pretty, but they pretty, may have been. pretty much any famous unsolved heist is likely them. Yeah, pretty Pretty much, yeah. I would say that as well. Uh, the movie The Tower Heist was uh, based off our dad's. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, the, the character that uh, Precious played was based on my <laughs> father. <laughs> That's right, Gavin Ray Sidibe was in Tower Heist. Uh, was it, like, it was like Eddie Murphy and uh, what's his name, the guy who killed somebody in a car? Uh, uh, Matthew Broderick. Yeah, Matthew Broderick. That's right, Matthew Broderick, murderer, but friend of the show. Murphy, yeah, well... I mean, you can't judge another man. Yeah, until you're in that position where you're getting away with murder. Yeah. You can't judge another man. All right, is Florida... uh, Yeah. I was going to say, he never said, I didn't kill a woman in my car. So, as far as we know, he is guilty. That's right. So, the next question, same guy. Is Florida as much as a hellhole as people say it is? I hate this question. This pisses me off. It's like uh, Florida has these sunshine laws, so all this stuff is open to the public. All of our crimes and all (coughs) our weird stuff, it's open to the public. So, of course, you're going to know about this and something that happens in Lexington, Kentucky or something. It's not an idea of Florida, man. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, kind of let's passing. let's start seeing Wisconsin man in the news. Listen up, sh- shit pro. You're officially no longer any son of mine because of this question. Florida is a paradise. It is a place where the mangoes grow on free as could be, and a dream is everything your heart might want. We've got Disney World here. We've got Epcot Center. We've got the Conch Republic, and we've got some of the gentlest women on Miami Beach. That's right. Right, there's some bombshells here, straight up bombshells. Water parks galore. Water parks galore. Our Disney has water parks. That's Typhoon Lagoon, and it has Blizzard Beach. So I don't get like, oh, Disneyland's better. Oh, really? Hey, uh, Disneyland, can you uh, go to the water park? Cause uh, no, you can't. So uh, <laughs> hey. take a hike, bozo. Hey, Disneyland has a alligator ever eaten a two-year-old on your premises? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. It, that comes with the territory sometimes, huh? You, you that take comes what with the you territory. can get. That's, this is the Wild yeah. West out here. You you out there in your Californias and Nevadas, you want to talk about your cowboys, and it's the Wild West out here. Well, you come down onto the Everglades and take a dip in the pool, see <laughs> where, where, where it's really wild now. That's right. That is right. So Next question. God. Do you want to read this one? Uh, what are you oh. eating? Just having a little bit of some uh, baby bell cheeses. Oh, great. This is a question from enemy of the show, Jack Nicholson's uh, character. Jack Nicholas. Jack Nicholas uh, portrayed this man in a movie, and it killed Heath Ledger. This is from the Joke Man at uh, Joke Man know. cometh. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, he says, "What's the pillow talk update on the situation in Venezuela?" 
Well, of course, we are closely monitoring the situation. We know what's happening. <laughs> we definitely do, and and uh, we, we don't want to give away too much because, you know, there's secret things going on down there, but what we can say is there are two sides that are in opposition to each other, and yes. uh, both sides think they're doing what's right, and they're both trying real hard to get their point across, and uh, I think uh, it's safe to say, as, a, as both a man and as a presidential candidate, that we we all wish the uh, resolution is peaceful and uh, works out uh, good for everybody. Yep. For starters, I'm going to say there's something going on in Venezuela, and I'll be the first to say I don't like it. I don't yeah. like what's happening. No. It's bad. Yeah, everyone it's, it's a, it's, a ba- it's a bad move, and the first thing I did was I- I've prayed on it. I, yeah. I've been pr- I've been praying on this. Looking for some wisdom. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I I'm not afraid to say I don't like what's going on in Venezuela. It's it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing, and you know, hopefully the right thing is what's next. Because <laughs> that's that's what I want. Uh, uh, the right thing needs to be next with Venezuela, and and I'm sick. I'm sick of tired of it. I'm sick of tired of it. I'm sick of tired. <laughs> I'm sick of tired of what's happening in Venezuela, and and you know what? Uh, I I think uh, I think I think I think something needs to happen. That's my stance. And, and, and people of Venezuela, take heart. This this is what's happening right now. It, it's not going to last forever. It'll it'll all end one way or another, and and you, everything. At least half of you, I think, will be happy. So, so uh, I, I'm glad we took the stance. The Doughboys would never do this, no. by the way. The Doughboys would never do it. Uh, they, they, they wouldn't do it. And, and Nick Weiger owns a Bullet Club shirt, so who cares? Oh, God, they're back. Do you hear them? Oh, I do. Oh, they great. came back for me again. Great. Good grief. Good grief, Howard. It's okay. Is... I set up some booby traps outside. <laughs> some, some Home Alone booby traps? Yeah. A couple of marbles? And so... <laughs> Some, a couple of marbles, so we should be fine. They set up some titty traps inside for us. <laughs> hey! <laughs> little motorboat action there, huh? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Not bad, Howard. Not bad. All right. Our next... I'm, I'm glad we've gotten past the Venezuela situation. Yeah, we all agree. We all agree. No no good. Yeah. yeah no. no good. Well, Hate bad, it. Bad scene. Bad scene. Bad stuff. Uh, great people there. Yeah, I love the people of Venezuela. Love the people. Don't like what's going on. We don't like the situation, but we it's a love bad... the people. Yeah, that's yeah. That that's what people said uh, when Thanos came in the Avengers. Said I don't like what's going on here, and I hope everything gets solved. You yeah, know? and he did. Captain he, America and says. he did what he thought was right. Yeah, he did what he thought was right. You can't fault him necessarily. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Where, where what where was I here? Oh, uh, oh boy. Okay, Bert. Bert. So, do you guys prefer to use a urinal with a divider or one long trough full of ice? One big room full of bad bitches. Uh, I prefer a long trough because I believe in the spirit of bon homi, of uh, of having camaraderie with my fellow man and. You just we, like chatting it up. I just chatting it up. I look to my left. I got a friend. I look to my right. I got a friend. Now there's maybe someone waiting behind me. I'm, I got a friend in him too. <laughs> and afterwards, I've seen you do it. You get a cup of. You get a cup right there. You got some ice, and you can get some more uh, ice cold beers and pour them there. You're gonna get the ice ready. That's Save right. Save the trouble. I, 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 they, that's Free what ice. They call it the party urinal when it's full of the ice. Party urinal. <laughs> Jesus, Harold Christ. Well, I'm a stall guy for starters. I am a stall guy. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not afraid. I'm not going to be ashamed of being a stall guy. I go in, and you know what? Sometimes on a hot, on a hot day, uh, I take my pants off and I pee like a toddler, and and you know I let my let my butt breathe a little bit. You know, you gotta I, give I, it some air. I gotta give it some air. You know, and I, I'm not afraid to say it. It'll be oh, you're a stall guy. You go to the stall to piss. Like, give me a break, man. Give me a break. Like. It's not that big of a deal. So am I a urinal or a trough guy? I mean, I prefer the urinal for divider. Jesus Christ. There's nothing worse than sporting events. But, uh, yeah, I am a stall guy. None of the above, Bert. None of the above. None of the above. (laughs) Hold on one moment, Howard. 
You oh, could talk yeah. about whatever you want. I need to take a whiz, actually. So go ramble on. The man is going to take a whiz. Now, when I took a whiz, it was the kid who played the little guy in uh, that movie with uh, Fred Savage. I took him down to uh, the Dave and Buster's, and I said, hey, you're a video game whiz. Let's win me a million tokens. Turns out the kid barely knows how to do anything. He barely knows how to turn on a TV with his elbows. I've seen a kid like that one time before, but it was in a real bad place in a real bad part of town. Oh, it's hard to talk just by yourself with no one else interacting with you, but somehow I think I got Howard, I'm back. Oh, my, thank heavens. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, boy, it was a lot gold. of commotion going on outside. I want to make sure we're good from the pigs in blue. Nothing's going to happen. It's, yeah. it's like on one hand you got the pigs in blue, but on the other hand you got the crooks and street criminals. In green? The criminals in green. <laughs> it's, I feel like that would be their uniform color. But yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, we, you know that criminals often wear a uh, similar, exactly the same clothes, and then when you're walking through the streets <laughs> fighting them, you'll fight one guy, <laughs> and you beat him up by throwing him into a garbage can, and then a little bit later you see that same guy again. <laughs> yeah, it's a common occurrence. It's a very common occurrence. And they always attack with the same patterns. <laughs> Anyways, next question. This is from uh, Effervescent Siddhartha. Hey. Uh, this is the guy. He has a bunch of questions. Uh, yeah. We can only get to some of them, but we appreciate it. We Seems love like... the enthusiasm. This is a cool dude. Yes. Okay. Franklin. Ron Funches says wrestling isn't real. Is this true? This guy, Ron Funches. First, he loses weight. Big uh, deal. So what? Another, another success story, huh? You know, Big Shot gets to have whatever diet. Even admitted, he just stopped eating like trash. I mean, credit to you and everything, pal. But uh, well, why'd you do it? Because uh, you're significantly less funny now. This guy, yeah? this guy loses his weight. I wish he'd lose the tood. Yeah, lose the dude, buddy. Like, what do you? I mean, he seems like a funny enough guy. Like, I like him enough, Ron Bunches. But you know, what was he in the Great Indoors on the last of the season with Christopher Mintz uh, Plas? Oh, was hey, it was nice of, McHale. nice of Christopher Mintz Plas to give that that kid a uh, <laughs> yeah, chance. give him the rub. Yeah, give him the rub. The Ron Bunches, um, wrestling isn't real. I mean. <sighs> What? Why would you? Why would he say that? Wait, if it, if it's not real, why are people doing it? Why are there championships? Uh, tell it to Owen Hart. Wrestling isn't real. Where is he? Oh, that's right. He was murdered. So, that's right. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's not why, real. Why are wrestlers getting murdered all the time? If it's yeah, not real? why are the wrestlers getting murdered almost frequently? Because they're in a dangerous sport. They're in a dangerous sport, people, high risk, high people reward. People always want to kill those that they're jealous of. And and who is more envied than a wrestler, yeah. pro wrestler, with the belts, with all the yeah. championship belts? The the big men with the big gold belts. That's right. That's right. Ron Funches also seems like a Bullet Club fan, you know? Yeah, the guy, yeah, Ron Funches, enemy of the show. Enemy of the show. I don't care if he's a great comedian. I I don't give a I don't give a I don't give a heck, you know. Yeah. Just take take a hike, man. I will not see him at the Miami Improv, you know. Even though I know it's Craig Robinson who was just there, uh, I feel like the boycott still stands. I I will not go. I you know, will not yeah. see him in the spring or the summer. <laughs> I will. He, nope. Make a promise. That's not not a threat. A promise. Next question. Same guy. Um, since you're running for president. What does Putin have on you? What does Putin have on you, Howard? This is why I'm an unbeatable candidate. Because everything Putin has on me is already publicly available information. Almost everything I've done has been either via the Freedom of Information Act or via the Sunshine Laws. Uh, easily accessible by anybody. I have nothing to hide. See? He's got nothing. There's a, cl a candidate with a clear conscience and... What else I, am, did he say? I am guilty of everything I've ever been accused of, and <laughs> anything else you want to accuse me of going forward, hell, I did it. Now, <laughs> let's move on. Play your hand, Putin. <laughs> you know, but, you know, you, you've done crimes. Yeah, you've been there. You've done that. We're moving on. You know, yeah, I don't. Next understand. question. No, not even the next question. I, I just mean in general Thank in the God. campaign. 
and wow. campaign. Uh, you've done, you know, you are running on kind of this this renegade campaign, so to say. Yeah. And it's not about it's not about making America great or anything like that. It's just about people being able to express themselves like they haven't before, you know? People being able to speak what's on their mind without fear of these PC lefty loonies or <laughs> no. these, these right-wing nuts talking about them, saying what they can or can't say. This is just common sense folk. Common sense folk. They're, Jesus they're, they're looking at the Republicans. They're saying, hey, I don't know about this. They're looking at the Democrats. They're saying, hey, you don't speak for me. <laughs> you don't speak for me. Well, I mean, typically you have the Democrats who are, who are uh, the lesser of the two evils. And that, it's not even a fair statement. They're just the ones who aren't Nazis necessarily. And they're, they're running okay. as independent. That's they're right. okay. Some of them, most of them are okay. You are running as an independent. And who, are, who do you think you're going to steal votes from? Because you're definitely not going to win, I don't think. Mm. You have a strong stance against Don Cheadle. I but have a pro a, baby stance. I have a very anti Cheadle stance, and that uh, I think is going to look very good in the polls. Uh, Some there, conservatives might like that. There has never <laughs> been a, a a solo war machine movie for a reason. He can't carry a film, and he can't carry an election. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I. I uh, I think I will appeal to uh, a lot of uh, the Republicans who are secret perverts I, because uh -huh, I, I look true. at them and I say, hey, no need to be secretive anymore. Let's just all be perverts. <laughs> Pierce Morgan is a foot guy, by the way. Oh, no this question. I, I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> <laughs> One of our finest uh, exports or imports, I should say, yeah. uh, Pierce Morgan. <laughs> no. he, he truly was the new Larry King. <laughs> Larry King was a foot guy? Is oh, a foot guy? No, that, they, br they brought Pierce Morgan in to replace Larry King. I understood that, yeah. 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 And Larry no, King. Larry I'm King even... Larry King was actually uh, – that. he's a uh, – uh, a wrist man. Ah, we, we used to be on a message board of Larry King. That's right. Funny we enough, <laughs> we really were. It's he, kind of bizarre. He, very he, outspoken he, on there. He very outspoken. He not not the guy you think he is from TV. No, the Larry King we were on a message board with. Uh, a very pro, guy. very profane man. Profane man. Uh, love twins. Oh, you love <laughs> twins. He is. <laughs> he he was always the first guy at the party and the last to leave. I don't know, because Larry King, uh, other Larry, you know, Larry King, the one we're speaking of, who, the one we know on the message board, and the one on TV, both have one thing in their Venn diagrams that they have in common. Twins. And not just twins. They're horn dogs. Yeah, big they time. They're horn dogs. Yeah. Dogs. You don't get to wear suspenders and not be like. You have to wear not be horny. suspenders if your boner is too powerful for a belt. <laughs> That's true. Your boner eventually uh, stretches the waist elastic, so the few times that you are soft, yeah, uh, your pants can't be held anymore. So, bingo, suspenders. Bingo, bango, bongo. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on here, Howard. We answered all the fan questions. Yes, uh, they were they were great questions. Wonderful questions, <laughs> everybody. Questions. None of them made me mad. <laughs> now I got one guy here who wants to ask you a question in person. He just came from downstairs. Come on over here. Come on downstairs. over here. Downstairs. <laughs> Come on over here. Hello, Uncle Howard. It's me, your good friend, Doctor Evil. Well, hello, hello, everybody. Uh, hello, Doctor Evil. Can I count on your vote this upcoming November from next? What particularly? Evil stances will you be taking? I thought Howard? I'd, I thought I'd make you my surgeon general. Ooh, ooh, so evil! I like it. I will like it so much. We'll Howard. get those warning labels off of the cigarettes once and for all. I want to smoke them down. Yes. Smoking a pancake? <laughs> oh, that that's like your member. friend. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Howard, I have a question for you. Ask away. For, for you and Franklin, you know Austin Powers, the documentary series that I am based on. Yes. Uh, very real. Howard, do you have any suggestions for Austin Powers 4? Mm. All right, Dr. Eva, I, I would Thank also you. Will like you to contribute to this. He'll take uh, his 
question off the air. <laughs> Austin Powers for I've actually called in the bedheads to throw in their suggestions for Austin Powers for. Oh, rally yeah. up, bedheads! I got Dicky Killjoy. He left me a a voice message, and I want to play it for the show. So let's, let's play hear it let's away. Hear, let's hear his suggestion for Austin Powers for, which is based on real events. Hold on one moment. Here we go. Hi, Franklin and Uncle Howard. It's your boy, Dick Killjoy, with my pitch for the next Austin Powers movie. Who is this guy? Dickie Killjoy. Octobussy. So, Dr. Evil's once again transported into the future. He's now in 2019. Okay. And uh, hmm. PC can- cancel culture oh, is no. deemed evil to be not cool, <laughs> not woke, but it's okay if you have a lot of money, so... Dr. Evil is just, uh, he's fine. He's number two, made a lot of good investments in Bitcoin. Rob Lowe. Dr. Evil is frozen. So or Robert Wagner. Okay. True. Austin, on the other hand, remains Killed his wife. due to Brexit, because that's <laughs> crippled the entire country of England, so he's still frozen. <laughs> this is a lot of, to, that, he has a lot uh, here. Funeral scene. Oh, a mini funeral. Liar. Pervert. Carver Electra. All right. Ooh. Mariah Carey sings a touching rendition of Always Be My Baby. All right. All right. All right. So uh, a touching <laughs> rendition of Always Be My Baby to Vern Troyer. That could be kind of all right. I yeah, like that. I, I like, like where he's going. He had, he had a lot of depth. He also suggested that uh, our friend of the show, uh, Clint Howard, play one of the villains, Louis K.C. Oh, <laughs> Now, that would be a wonderful role and a wonderful actor to play him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, now how are you going to get somebody like Clint Howard to be as creepy and disgusting as Louis C.K.? I don't know if it's if he has that kind of range. I mean, that I, guy was I, a Malibu Dan. I don't know that I've ever seen Clint Howard play anybody but a hell of a guy. So a, a class is, act, a good-looking guy. It is hard guy. to say. Good-looking, no. Yeah, he is a good man. He's a good guy. Clint, Clint Howard is by far my favorite Howard. Yeah. Well, aside from myself. Aside from yourself. Sorry. Of course. I meant of the Howard family. <laughs> right. Obviously, you know. I mean, it's like me saying, uh, I should have known a lot of Franklin, but like a heck of a lot. Benjamin actually. Franklin. <laughs> okay. Now, there's no NBA players named Franklin. <laughs> it's kind of like when I realized, damn, my name sucks. You know? Yeah, that is bad. I've got Dwight Howard. You got Dwight Howard. Yeah, good guy. Yeah, cool dude. <laughs> Real funny man. <laughs> Real funny guy. Real funny guy. Got himself into some issues. Got yeah. Him, yeah, got himself into some issues that, uh, you know what? I'm not afraid to say I don't like what happened. That's my stance. I, 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 I want to hear it from him before I make it. <laughs> I, 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 I just, you know... I, I don't care for what happened. I'm not afraid to say it. You need to start being more political. I'm, te- I'm trying to teach you, Howard. You know, these are bold statements I'm making that can't be spun one way or the other. I, and I need to pray on it. You need to pray on it. You know what, Dwight Howard? I'm gonna pray on this before I, I come up with a decisive conclusion on uh, all the transphobic stuff surrounding. Uh, you know, your like issues. I don't know. Whatever. Not interesting. I don't. Know Anyways, if issues per se. But. I mean, he, he he beat up or like threatened somebody. I don't know. Oh, I, I don't remember recall. that. I, yeah, 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 I yeah, yeah, yeah. I, somebody, I know somebody. The story accurately. Yeah. Okay. So somebody was like, yeah. I, I guess I'm not the guy to remember. I'm here like flubbing on it, but like uh, somebody claimed to date him, uh, a uh, trans lady. And, he, you know, she was like, I'm not afraid to say it. You know, like, we were a thing. Now we're not anymore. And he's ashamed of it. And then, like, he threatened her life or something like that. Oh, the threatening is an issue. Yes. Yeah. You know what? Don't care for that. That's a bad That's a bad move. It's a uh, bad look. Now, now, they're, now they're saying uh, that she wasn't being honest. So, so that's well, a lot of... Well, but of course... No, this is this is what I, this is just like in Venezuela. You've got one this side. is like Venezuela. This is Venezuela we know what's all happening. over again. We know exactly what's happening. And there we're not afraid to say we don't like it. We don't disagree. like it. <laughs> and we just wish uh, it could all just 
be, be resolved. Yeah. Be resolved. Yes. Thank you, Howard. Anyways, so the next Austin Powers politics. Source, politics. We're a smart show now. Yep. Why hasn't Jack Allison answered your request? Uh, your to debate. He is a coward. Wow. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank God he doesn't listen to the show, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's listened to us a couple of times, but like yeah. he has a stance like he doesn't listen to his friend's stuff. Well, I I appreciate that for a lot yeah. of reasons. Yeah, yeah, it's a very thoughtful thing to say. Listen to a couple of episodes. Like, yeah, fuck? it's better than anybody I know this time. Right, right, right. So next suggestion on Austin Powers 4, but before we get to ours, comes from uh, Rocco. Modern Life. Think about, think about these Austin Powers movies is that there's already a trilogy that we need to heighten. We need to go first. He sounds smart second. here. So the first one is Secret Agent from the 60s who comes to the modern era in the 90s. The second one is he goes back to the 60s. The third one is he goes to the 70s. And also the Does he work for NPR? Volcano, <laughs> the moon, and, you know, normal James Bond type secret villain layers. Thanks, Egghead. We know this, dude. We're film experts. Yeah. So you can't go bigger than space. But what you can do is take the time angle and go forward instead of back. Oh, the time stone. Thanos. So there's really nothing to do other than go smaller. You need to do the reverse. Oh, the quantum realm from Ant Man. So you make Austin Powers become Thanos. Solving a murder that hasn't occurred yet, and we'd call it Minority Repowers. Okay, so this is like Minority Report, where they see the crimes before they happen, and they have to stop them. Meets Austin Powers. Uh, I dig it, actually. I I, I genuinely dig it, and he has a podcast, much like us, a very, you know, we're kind of crime, kind of political, you know. I don't know why we're labeled as a comedy podcast, because we don't do a lot of jokes here. I know, the only joke... What have we done a joke here? (laughs) The the only joke that I see is uh, uh, how uh, politics has gotten, uh, it's all about money now. (laughs) That's right, that's right. You know, what's a real joke? Uh, The people in uh, Congress... Yeah, that's that's funny. That's or, a very funny uh, joke. You know, you know, it, it's not funny, haha. But it kind of makes me laugh that people don't know anything about what's going on in Venezuela. <laughs> if you don't know what's going on in Venezuela, let me tell you, you you're a real dumb dumb. You <laughs> might you might not even know what's happening in your own backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. you, you want to know what's really going on in Venezuela? Just look out the window, pal. Look out the window, pal. It's yeah. all around us. It's all around us, man. It, it's embarrassing. I'm glad. We switched to a, an intellectual show. Maybe yeah. that will weed out some of the nanas who listen. This is a podcast that's not for nanas. I feel like we strayed away from that messaging, and they've crept back into our fan base. Yeah, they're, they're, if nanas have gotten involved a little bit, but now we're saying stuff that's too smart for a nana to ever that's understand. That's true. We're too smart now. Are we for eggheads now, though? I don't want to be for eggheads. I don't want to. I want to be in that happy medium. That's right, right. Between utter bird brains and total <laughs> eggheads. <laughs> That's right. Well, there's a lot of room there. I, I call it like... the comic book movie space. The comic book movie space. <laughs> Speaking of comic movies, why hasn't Marvel ever done a drama? Well, that's true. They have... Absolutely should. Like, they should do something where Tony Stark has to deal with the fact that his best friend went from cool guy Terrence Howard to shit guy Don Cheadle. <laughs> he got a lot, of, a lot of vigor for Don Cheadle, man. Fuck. Yeah, I'm coming after him today. <laughs> Finally, somebody to take Don Cheadle down a peg. Bye-bye, Don Cheadle. Bye-bye. <laughs> I mean, real heartfelt drama in the MCU. They're cowards. They won't do... I mean, sure, they, they tried real hard with... Uh, was it the Daredevil to make a very boring show, but that wasn't very smart. No. Uh, make a film. Make a film. Not a movie. A film. Now if Time Stones... I, I guess this Austin Powers movie this guy wanted to do is like, oh, we could have the Time Stone. It's like, those are Marvel properties, but he doesn't know. You that's know? A, we that's know this. a good point. What would happen if Austin Powers got the Infinity Gauntlet? <laughs> <laughs> what would Austin Powers do with the Infinity Gauntlet? Gauntlet. First, he would go back to those Asian twins, Fook Me and Fook You. Oh, of course. <laughs> he would go back to those twins. Twins? <laughs> and he would tell Basil, uh, this can wait. 
for starters. Yeah. This can wait. He'd walk off with a bottle of champagne. Yeah, and he would definitely just plow them for hours. Yeah. Yeah. What else would Austin Powers do with that time stone? Um, He'd prob- bring Mini Me back to life. Damn. He could save Mini Me. Holy shit, man. He could say, hey, Vern. You know, you want to do my movie? You know, I'm sorry I waited so long, and I'm sorry what Beyonce did to the franchise. Uh, you know, I need you, man. I need you, which is what you should have said for a while, you know, and maybe we wouldn't be where we are right now. But I'm not issuing blame. No. It's not issuing blame. I'm just saying what he would do with the Time Stone, you know? Uh, he would definitely go back and save Mini-Me. I mean, he could do a lot of things with that Infinity Gauntlet, man. He, he could definitely make the world a more shagadelic place, you know? A lot and of orgies. That would be the most shagadelic thing of all. You know, I don't. I think things society would collapse. So, who's gonna be running the subway system? Who's gonna be running transportation? People are just gonna be having orgies and like, just gonna be so tired from all the nutting we're doing as a society. Nothing's gonna get done. You know. That's what people don't talk about. Yeah, you know, it's not. It's not a Shangri La. You know, it's, no. it's just. It's not. It's just a town not being open. You know. So I don't know if Austin Powers can really his uh, end result on society will not be great. I, with the Infinity Gauntlet. No, he better not have it. I I was thinking of making a movie about uh, Austin Powers, but making it kind of a gritty uh, uh, modern update of the character. Okay. So when we see you know the human cost to him, he's he's joking and laughing around during the day, but at night. He's killing men. He's shooting guns at people. He, that's he is take, killing. Pe- he's killed many people already. That's got to take a toll on a man. Yeah. Yeah. Are we to believe that this man is such a shallow, empty puppet that that doesn't hurt him to kill another? <laughs> so we're talking Austin Powers with some PTSD here. I uh, PTSD Austin Powers. It's filmed all in black and white. Jesus. And he just is drinking the whole God. time. I feel like it would fuck with his libido. Like, when he lost his mojo, that was a PTSD. Like, that was just, like, you know, all the deaths under him because of him. That's, that's on him. That's, yeah, but that was regainable. But you can never regain your innocence. Ooh, so this is just a... So Austin Power. I feel once you reach that point in your humanity, so to say, you have to go to some great lengths to nut. Like, those are some, those dark, like, what do soldiers nut to? Because, you know, they've done some horrendous things, you know? Not all soldiers. Are you taking, I, I heard a noise there, sorry. Uh, I, what do sol, what do people, hitmen, assassins, what do these guys jerk off to? Because they're not jerking off to, like, random big chested ladies like we do or anything like that. Like, or just random hunks. What are they doing? They, they're the ones who, like, really get weird with it, I feel. That's just my stance. I I think they're probably the most vanilla ones of all. You think so? I think if you kill a man, then to get off, you have to be doing some real, the autoerotic uh, fixation kind of stuff. Uh, well, they're not psychopaths. They're just no, no. farm kids that are trying to get their way out of Peoria. They're the ones who, they're out there, they're out in the desert 500, 700, 9,000 miles away from the civilized world. And, and they can't jerk off and there. they can't jerk off there. And all it's too they, hot. All they want to see is just a regular old pair of cans. True enough. I guess you just put them, that's why they're finding like the pinup model. Yeah, like that's that. why they're still looking at pictures of Betty Page. <laughs> <laughs> they just got a, like a random Keeney on there and they're good, I suppose. I, I thought otherwise. I thought, so th- I thought, not soldiers necessarily, but assassins, you know. Real people like Austin Powers, those are the ones who are jerking off to some depraved things. And yeah. Austin Powers, who's fucked so many people by now, how has he not, what, what is he pounding off to? What gets him off? Twins doesn't work anymore. No, he's been there. Been there, done that. Got there, the t-shirt. There's nothing that can surprise Austin Powers. So our Austin Powers movie, simply put, Austin Powers, search for the perfect nut. That's That's, <laughs> that's it. That's it, you know? He's he's looking for he's already nutted so much. What's left? There's, What's there left for him to nut to? When, when you've nutted to everything, is there anything left to live for? God damn, that's a poster and a tagline that we will be doing. And my campaign slogan. <laughs>
<laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm. Howard, before we close the show, oh. enemy of yours, mm, John is... Legere. I John know what Legere you were going to say. Of T-Mobile. T-Mobile. He's got he single-handedly locked the man in the store, didn't he? Yes, I was. Or one of his cronies did, not him necessarily. Not necessarily him, but one it's... of his henchmen. Certainly, you must say, with a big company like that, the buck stops here and it starts with the top man. It starts at the top. That's right. I was on Twitter, as I sometimes am, uh, looking for uh, people who are telling me that they're going out of ha- uh, town for the weekend so I can go to their homes and rob them. Of I, course. I saw a promoted tweet some guy had paid for. He was a uh, gentleman of, uh, of a certain uh, background, and he was in a T-Mobile, <laughs> T-Mobile store, and he wanted to buy a... Uh, a phone and they locked him in the store so i guess he couldn't run away with it or something and, and his allegation was racism and i find it very hard to uh, think of an alternate explanation for it no this is a black man this was he, a, bought, a, he bought a phone in cash i mean it, i don't know why with, it's like it's a red arm like okay yeah oh this guy's got cash it's gonna be i'm gonna have to count <laughs> right. Was that the, yeah, like, oh, this dickhead. Oh, I got to count now? I have to go, like, up to, like, 40. Maybe. I got to do math now. Jesus Christ. Yeah, what a, what a nightmare. <laughs> so, anyway, I saw this, and it was with great interest that I noticed this, because uh, John Legere has been doing his slow cooker Sundays and and carrying on like a like a buffoon. <laughs> but but, uh, but he's, a, he's the leader of a company. He's, he's a king, and he's acting like a clown. Wow, he's acting like a jester right he now. He is, and well, now and look at it, his empire is crumbling before him. We got to get the word out there because that was an act of racism. A man, a black man, was locked in a store, which is bizarre, bizarre as it is, and was, you know, the opposite of there. what you'd expect a real good racist to do. A racist yeah. who knows his salt would yeah. lock a black man out of <laughs> yeah. yeah you know you used to lock him out and now we're locking him in i mean now now the the, the the good racists no there are no good racists they're they're yeah. all bad to they're me. all they're bad apples now michael richards he said he, i'm not a racist that's and so we thing. know he's not so we know he's not hulk hogan never said that just no. to reiterate or something. Hulk Hogan is definitely a racist. Now, Jean he... Legere hasn't said if he's a racist or not. That's and, my problem. And I, I, you know, the thing about it is, it, it, I don't even know if Jean Legere has the uh, wherewithal to be a racist because I think he's just too ignorant to even know about races, period. He might, he might be a nitwit, yeah. but, he's still, but he's, we still have to hold him accountable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's the thing. Ignorance is no excuse, Legere. Ignorance is no excuse. That's what they've told us many times when they pulled us over in the Miata. Yeah. And you know, every a lot of time yeah. I pretend I didn't speak English. <laughs> it was quite great, the explanation you would give those pigs. But, uh, you know, I don't, you know, we're profiled a lot because of the Miata. So yeah. blacks, uh, the POC, I guess that's the term now. The we AOC. Get it. AOC. We get it. You know, we drive, you know, just because we break the speed limit and are in a Miata, we get pulled over. Yeah. I mean, we get it, man. It's like, just, just like we're a couple of jerks. Yeah. Yeah, 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 just like a couple of jerks. Like, come on, man. Come on. So we, we understand it. We understand the plight, you know. We're with it. And we don't, we don't like it. We don't like it. No, that's we're... my stance on, that should be your stance on racism. Racism? Hey. I hate it. You know what? Racism, not for me. Not for me. <laughs> not for me. If that's your choice, okay, not for me. No, yeah. Maybe, maybe not okay, but... <laughs> maybe not okay, yeah. We'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll talk about this. It depends um, who you're inclined to vote for in 2020. <laughs> you will accept a racist vote, would you? <clears throat> well, a racist <laughs> vote is worth just as much as anyone else. <laughs> you got to get those votes, man. we got to yeah. get those votes for you. I'm a, uh, I'm a flip-flopper, though. So. <laughs> Very rare. A, cam- a guy on the, on the campaign trail admit to being a flip-flopper. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I'm How very honest. Them? For those who want to follow your campaign, where can they find you? Well, I'm on. I guess I should update my Twitter handle to make it more presidential at some point. <laughs> right, right now, it is Miata Guy for you. Letter for number you. You. Uh, I say that every time. Uh, sometimes on purpose. You can send me a DM. I will 
mail you stickers. If you want some, just send me your address. I'll send them to you for free. You can also DM uh, Franklin, who'll tell you his Twitter name in a minute. Um, and we'll get them to you for free. You can give us a little money via Venmo at Poopy Mommy Diapers if you want to support us a little bit, help pay our uh, hosting fees. None of that money goes in our own pockets. That's no. A damn no. promise. Uh, we're on iTunes, we're on Stitcher, we're on SoundCloud. If you can rate us, if you can like us, if you can write a review, that'd be really, really good. If you want to tell any of your dumb little friends on the internet or whatever to listen to us, yeah, why not? Why not? And I'm at Bug TV Franklin on Twitter and Instagram. I don't know why you'd follow me on Instagram, but hey, don't go through my likes. Those are personal, those are private. It's against the law. Yeah. So don't go through my likes. Let's like cyber Howard crime. said. Like, like Howard said, if you want stickers, DM me or him. <laughs> Gladly send them to you. If you want to throw some change our way, that'd be dope. You don't have to. It's all good. You know, we're just about spreading the word. We're not begging for Patreon money with a tin can with a bunch of coins. They're not saying like who, like who does that. I don't know. You know, Doughboys, whatever. I don't care. Not my prerogative here. I'm not jingling and jangling here. A bunch of chains there. I'm not. Hey, hey, spare some Patreon money, please. No, man. Hey, Doughboys, what? keep the change. <laughs> Ooh, you just dunked on him, Howard. Yeah. You just dunked How's on him. How's that hopey, changey stuff working out for you now? <laughs> You're like Sean Kemp. Right That's, on them. Yeah. They're that white guy on the floor. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Sean, at him. Sean Kemp, uh, who uh, was a victim of my enemy, Howard Schultz. <laughs> was he? Yeah, yeah, he was. He was a Seattle supersonic. Now you were an enemy of Sean Kemp because when he, got, when he was in Portland... He said he needed to beef up, and then he ate his way out of the league. Yeah. Got advice from you. I, I told him he needed more mass. He needed to c cultivate, cultivate mass. Yeah, he needed to cultivate mass, and he just kept on cultivating like I'd never seen before. <laughs> it made sense. You think with all that power, who can stop him? Assuming he could maintain the same speed. And no one could stop him, and that was no. the problem. They had, to, they had to kick him out of the league because he just kept running people over left and right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sean Kemp. Too big. Too much mass for the NBA. Starting that conspiracy. It wasn't because he was bad all of a sudden. It was, it, was, it was too much for the average player to handle. He was too much of a big boy. And for those who don't appreciate what my Uncle Howard did for Sean Kemp, you can always go... Fuck yourselves!